Fallout 76 just came out a couple of weeks ago. Is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. I haven't played it, and actually when I filmed this Fallout, it's not out yet. When we shot this, it has yet to come out, but that's, that's life, baby. Cocktails. Cocktails never change. This is How to Drink, the show about cocktails and how to drink them. I've never been a bartender, never been a bar back, never been a bar apprentice, but I've never... Well, I've been in bars. I've been in a lot of bars. But cocktails never change. I am a huge, crazy fan of the Fallout video games. Gigantic fan of Fallout. I don't want to set the world on fire or anything, but... I gotta say, I'm really about that Fallout 1 and 2. Um, I, I, I liked Fallout 3. I thought Fallout 3 was okay. I liked New Vegas a lot. All the development behind that game was based on the Van Buren Project, which as a, as a teenager in the 90s, I was eagerly awaiting uh, Fallout 3, which was you know internally called that interplay, the Van Buren Project come out. I remember playing the leaked levels that we were sharing and stuff like that. And then of course Interplay went out of business and we never got Van Buren. But they took all those story notes and they turned them into Fallout New Vegas. That was a great game. I loved Fallout New Vegas. Fallout 3 is a little and I have I never I didn't have the gumption to play Fallout 4. I apologize. I did play all the expansions on New Vegas. I particularly liked um, Dead Money. And honestly, I wanted to make a cocktail for this uh, based on the Sierra Madre Martini, but uh, between us, I didn't have the time to work out that recipe. So hopefully I'll get to that one later. I think it will be good. I just haven't figured out how to make that recipe the way I need it to be yet. Um, instead, we're gonna do something we've never done before. We're gonna make a shooter. We're gonna make a shot on this uh, episode. And I think that a lot of you guys like having shots. I think shots are a great thing to put out at a party, particularly if you're doing a themed party, particularly if you're doing a video game themed party, you wanna put out a tray of shooters. And so we're making a stim pack shot. Thought a lot about this, okay? So in Fallout 2, and I'm not gonna deal with the Fallout tactics recipe for stim pack creation. I'm, I like Fallout 2 quite a bit in Fallout 2. You can learn to make uh, stim packs um, from rock flour and Xander root and empty hypodermic needles. Uh, we're not gonna inject this, so we're scrapping the hypodermic needle. Brock flour and Xander root, well, um, later in New Vegas, when they came back, they changed the look of them a little bit, but in Fallout 2, um, I think that the artwork for Xander root looks a bit like ginger, and the Brock flower plants, if I'm not mistaken, there's a early quest where you have to kill a bunch of uh, man-eating plants in the Brock flower fields. They're tall plants with flowers on them, kind of like the gentian that grows, that they make uh, Suze out of, or Suze. I don't, uh, we're back to that thing where I don't speak French, so we're just gonna say Suze. Uh, but anyway, this is a very bitter aperitif made from gentian root. A little bit goes a long way. I actually kept having to remake this recipe, dialing it back, because the first couple times were undrinkably tart. Um, those are kind of our, our core things here. We're gonna use a ginger syrup and a gentian root. I made ginger syrup down by the beach, so you can use that recipe for ginger syrup. Uh, the longer you simmer water out of it, the stronger it gets. Uh, the syrup I'm using is on the pretty strong side, so you may have to tailor your recipe to suit. The idea here is that this is a pick-me-up. It's a jolt, you know, it's a jolt, much like a stim pack is which is a restorative, uh, it's a healing potion, basically. It's an injectable healing potion that is a staple of all the Fallout games. We're gonna uh, to shake this drink up in a shaker, pour it into a couple of shot glasses and knock them back. Uh, you could serve this up. You could put this into a martini glass or something, and I think it's a perfectly drinkable cocktail in that way, but it's fun to make a shot and share it with friends, and, uh, and there's no reason you, you can't. So let's do exactly that. Okay, so we're gonna cut a lemon and juice that lemon. I'm gonna need one ounce of lemon juice. One ounce of lemon juice in my tin, in my tin. This is my giant bottle of ginger syrup. Should have transferred it to a smaller bottle, but that's okay. Uh, we're gonna do one ounce of a ginger syrup. This is a pretty gingery ginger syrup made uh, in my ginger syrup video. Basically, it is two parts demerara sugar, one part water, and an awful lot of um, ginger simmered for a long time. We need one ounce of vodka. We use an absolute vodka. I don't usually use vodka. And I need a quarter ounce of the Suze. Suze, Suaza. Quarter ounce. A little bit goes a long way. We're gonna shake this drink. 
Pour this into these two shot glasses. And there we have the Stimpak shot. Now, it doesn't glow in the dark. Light. Might have some black light reactive qualities. Doesn't do anything crazy. You could serve it in a different vessel for more science fiction fallout uh, bona fides, uh, but you don't have to. You get the gentian nose right up front. Very bitter smell. A lot of that, um, the Suze. Suzy. Suze Q. Uh, real bitter and potent smelling. And I kind of like that. I kind of want this drink to be a little medicinal feeling. It's bracing. It's good though. I mean, it's it's a hot ginger shot. I like it. It's good. It's got a dryness to it from the gentian. So like you can actually, as it goes down, you can feel your tonsils, your throat, mouth puckering, and you get a nice heat from the ginger. That's actually delicious, honestly. It's really good. It is sweet. Right on the edge of too sweet, not too sweet. I like it a lot, actually. Matter of fact, I like it so much. Stimpak is a healing item you encounter in all the Fallout games. And and actually, in some of the Fallout games, Stimpak addiction is a problem. Um, uh-oh. Looks like I'm all out. I might have to make another one. Feed my Stimpak addiction. It's not real proofy, like, as far as a shooter goes which is kind of what you want, right? There's an ounce of vodka in this, um, and the Suze is only 20%. So overall, um, each of these are, are pretty low as far as ABV. You can easily feed these to your friends at a party um, and let them have a couple. And it definitely does like have a, there's like a, um, almost like the horseradish in uh, Bloody Mary, man. That is just opens the sinuses, wakes you up. It. I'm pretty proud of this one. I'm, pre I'm pretty okay with calling this the Stimpak shot, a, uh, a post-nuclear cocktail. Wow, that's pretty cool. I was a little, I'm a little too young to really play a lot of the uh, text-based adventure role-playing games that come like prior to graphics. I was like, MMOs were become, were a thing when I was a kid, but like Ultima was it, and I didn't have a reliable internet connection. Anyway, long story short, for me, role-playing games, um, or video role-playing games, were largely things like Final Fantasy or Secret of Mana, which I still love, where they're very linear narrative story-based, and you just kind of, if you think about it, in a lot of ways, it's more of an interactive movie than a, a game where you take on a role and play that character. I'll never forget, I was walking around the aisles of Nobody Beats the Wiz. Uh, and encountered uh, Fallout. I, you know, I, I had not heard about it prior to that, and I just as soon as I saw the box art, games came in boxes back then. I was just uh, it blew me away. It was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. And playing that game was like revelatory for me because there, here's a game where um, it's a role-playing game where you can actually design your character from top to bottom, and those choices have profound effects on the game. And that's actually one of the, my gripes about the modern versions, is that like uh, the choices you make at the beginning of the game are less prone to lock you out or lock you into different paths. And, uh, and you could go in any direction you wanted, do anything you wanted. Um, I did not even realize the first playthrough in Fallout that you could acquire party members. Um, that like blew my mind when I found that out later. And so it was cool. I don't know, it was just something like I'd never played anything like that before in my life. It was as close to uh, like Dungeons and Dragons or a pen and paper role playing game as I'd ever encountered in a video game. And that makes a lot of sense. Fallout was developed, actually the math behind it was, it was originally based on GURPS, which is... I'm a bad nerd. I'm forgetting what GURPS stands for, but basically it's another role playing system. And then when they lost the licensing for GURPS, they redeveloped their own system, which I, I think is makes more sense from a computer side using a percentage based system than something that's kind of built around dice, sort of arbitrary for a computer to do. It's a lot of talking about Fallout. Fallout 76 seems like a really cool idea. Certainly the idea of an on online Fallout, a multiplayer Fallout. I was eager for that when I was a kid. I, I, I'm a little more suspicious of it now in the current state of video gaming. Um, hopefully it's, uh, it's gonna be okie dokie. And hopefully it's wonderful. But when will they make more isometric top-down 
turn-based role-playing games, because that's really, bring that back. Really, Fallout 1 and 2, I love that game. I love Fallout 2, Fallout 1, Fallout 2, it's funny, okay, so Fallout 1, slightly better writing, Fallout 2 has a better UI, you can push NPCs out of the way when they're blocking doors. The most frustrating thing in the world when an NPC would block a door in Fallout 1 and you'd have to wait for like an hour for them to just like cycle and move. Is a uh, primitive days. Those are primitive days in video games. That is the show. That's how to drink. We made a Fallout-inspired drink that I drank all of. The Fallout shot, the Stimpak shot, and I, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Pretty simple drink. A little Suze, ginger syrup, some vodka, and lemon juice. I'm going to see you guys next week with another cocktail. If you like the show, I hope you will subscribe. And if you like video game drinks, I'd love to do more of them. Shoot me ideas for more video game-inspired drinks that you would like to see me do. Honestly, uh, my video gaming interests are fairly old school, so when I was thinking about video game drinks I wanted to make, I wanted to do the potions uh, from Super Mario Bros. 2. Uh, I, after discussing with some people, people told me that no one will, most people are not gonna get that reference. But uh, uh, I would love to hear ideas and suggestions for video game inspired drinks and to do more of those in the future. I'm on Twitter at How To Drink. That'd be a great place to suggest video game drinks to me. I am on uh, Instagram at How To Drink. I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash this is how to drink. I hope you like the show and that you will subscribe and ring that notification button. I'm going to edit that part out. That was like a hack when I do that. And I'll see you guys next week with another cocktail on how to drink. Thank you guys so much for watching. Goodbye. Your death was lingering and extremely painful.